All right, now one thing that's really useful to um, notice about each equation is that each of these equations is missing one of the kinematics variables. Remember that we are already earlier saw all the kinematics variables. Um, well, each of these is missing one of the kinematics variables. For example, this equation is missing delta x, displacement. You can see that displacement is missing from this equation. It has four of the kinematics variables, but it's missing displacement. It turns out to be very useful to know what variable each equation is missing. So actually, um, why don't you pause the video, and as a very easy exercise, write down the variable that each of the remaining four equations is missing. So just as an easy exercise, try to pause the video and write down what variable is each of these other equations missing. I hope you gave that a shot. Looks like this is missing the acceleration. And this one is missing the time. And this one is missing the final velocity. And this equation is missing the initial velocity. All right, so I hope it's apparent to you where all these are coming from. Um, so uh, if you look at this equation over here, it has all four kinematics variables, except it does not have the initial x velocity. So that's the missing. Uh, variable. It might seem uh, peculiar, but it's actually very useful to know the variable that's not included in each equation. It's going to make it much easier for us to pick the right equation for the right problem. Uh, and by the way, this is why I really like to include this equation in the list of kinematics variables. Um, because now um, there's five kinematics variables and we have five equations. I think it's, it's kind of nice uh, since there's five kinematics variables to have five equations. Um, so there's one equation that's missing each of the kinematics variables. So make sure you add this to column to your notes. In fact, I hope that you put this whole thing in um, a good, safe place in your notes. Everything that I have on the board should be in a good place in your notes, because uh, I'm going to erase it in a second. OK, so hopefully you have all this in your notes. Now remember, there's actually five more equations, because there's also the five equations for the y components. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is try to pause the video and reduplicate what I have on the board except for the y components. That should be another really easy exercise, but um, I, I think it's instructive. So try to pause the video and write down everything that I have on the board except for the y components. I hope you gave that a shot. Well, that should be quite easy. Um, just everywhere where I have a subscript x, I'm going to replace that with y. So instead of v final x, this is now v final y. And instead of v initial x, this should be v initial y. And instead of a sub x, that should be a sub y. And this equation now is not missing delta x, it's missing delta y. So I hope that you tried to update the missing variables as well. Uh, this is not delta x. It's delta y. This becomes v initial y. This is v final y. Over here, we have v final y squared and v initial y squared and a sub y and delta y. I forgot to change this over here. This missing variable is a sub y. Here we have delta y, v initial y, a sub y. The missing variable is v final y. Here we have delta y, v final y, a sub y, and v initial y. OK, so here are the five kinematics equations for the y component. Uh, and again, I hope that you have all of these in your notes, both the equations and the missing variables. So I recommend having um, one page of notes where you have all 10 of the kinematics um, equations and their missing variables. Now, really, maybe in a sense, you only really need to write down, say, the x components. If you know what the equations are for the x components, it should be very easy to get the y components. So maybe you only need five of these, and then you could easily get the y components um, if it was necessary for a problem. I wanted to remind you one more time that we only use these equations for problems that have constant acceleration. 
These equations only work for constant acceleration. That's the type of problem we're going to be doing through this whole series of videos. When people say they're doing kinematics problems, what they usually mean is they're doing constant acceleration kinematics. I want to say um, one more thing about this equation. Um, there's one bad thing about this particular equation. The bad thing is that sometimes you can't solve this equation without using the quadratic formula. Sometimes you can't solve this equation without using the quadratic formula. Uh, let me show you why that is. Let's suppose that we know that the displacement, say, is uh, 10. And the initial velocity is, uh, I don't know, 5. And the acceleration is, I don't know, 7. But we don't know the time. Let's say we're trying to figure out the time. Now, how would you solve this equation? Well, this is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation um, because we've got both a t squared and a t term. There's no way that you can just get the t by itself like you normally would when you're solving an equation. The only good way to solve this is to use the quadratic formula. All right, I'm not going to cover right now how to use the quadratic formula. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to include that in these videos, or maybe not. But I did want to warn you up front, there is a danger when you use this equation because it has both the t and the t squared, you might end up having to use the quadratic formula. Uh, maybe at some point I'll get a chance to make, uh, include some stuff in the videos about how to deal with that situation. But don't be surprised if you end up with an equation like this where you feel like, where you, feel like you have to use the quadratic formula. Um, by the way, that also applies That also applies to this equation. This is the fifth equation that we talked about. You might also have to use the quadratic equation here. Uh, but even though we included this in our list, remember that this equation actually comes up much less often. This is much less likely to come up. It was the other equation that, where you're more likely to need the quadratic formula.